out there <laughs> that's your new name you all know gray maniacs because uh, you're super duper fans of my channel yeah yeah well I don't know about super duper fans I've got a few super duper fans definitely <laughs> I've got regulars let's call them regulars right rather than make it up so like some kind of uh, <laughs> fanboy stuff right so I'm going through the rest of my Dial H for Hero books. Um, no, no mail today, I'm afraid. I've got a comic that should have been here by now and it hasn't arrived yet. It's from the same seller I've got a blinking problem with at the moment from a comic that came with, with missing pages that I haven't sent back yet. I should have sent it back by now. But the thing is, I went to the ready comic shop. Not comic shop. I went to the post office um, and I ended up being there an hour early because they changed their opening hours. So I ended up leaving it and... Uh, and I haven't got back to it yet, so hopefully I've not run out of time for sending this book back. They did, they did make it a longer return period because of the coronavirus, but uh, I don't think, hopefully I haven't gone into the, oh, but it's the same seller, so it's quite annoying that they've, you know, also a comic hasn't turned up. Like, just after this, I put in a blinking claim for this other one. Uh, anyway, we'll see. Uh, should be, I've got a sore jaw this morning, I don't know why. I don't think it's too fake, I think it's my jaw. I wasn't too sure what I did to it. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, some guy on Facebook is tempting me. He's going comics, comics. I go no, no. I must, I must pay attention to my bank account. My bank account is saying no, but he's going look at these comics like that, and I'm going no, no. I'm not interested in the comics. I'm not gonna look at them. I'm not gonna look. <laughs> <laughs> like that and uh yeah i'm gonna buy them <laughs> it's a big stack of uh house of mystery 28 house of mysteries like including some hundred page giants uh and uh the price is working out i don't know less than three quid each including the postage and i'm like to myself no i can't do it i can't do it i'm a fool if i spend that money at the moment but I'd be a fool not to, because they all look like they're in good condition. There's some hundred page giants in there, and they look like they're seventies or something like that. Oh. And um, yeah, so I, I've said I'm gonna buy them. <laughs> oh help! Anyway, let's show you the rest of these comics. Hero, I'm holding that for a hero to the end of the night And he's gotta be strong and he's gotta be something or whatever And he's gotta be larger than life It's me, I am your hero da -da -da. No, shut up, foolish man Right, this is actually one and two Collecting the sold out issues one and two I never saw that before, I didn't notice that Till I come to look at them again later. So they must have, yeah. Just are they, how often did they do that? They combined the first two issues into one comic. Obviously, they, they must have stopped what they said. It's just collecting the sold out issues one and two. Right. Uh, these are from 2003. I haven't got the joy on the covers of the as the older ones, the the, the 60s ones and the and the uh, 80s ones. If you look at the cover, you couldn't even tell what it was about. In fact, they don't even go with dial H for hero. It's just called hero. Although you can see the the H dial there in the in the dial. It's like some of the joy has gone out of comics by now. You know, they're, they're still superheroes. They're still good stories. In this one, different people are getting hold of the dial. And the dial sort of is passing along and having different stories along its journey as different people utilise it kind of thing. I think one bunch of... Uh, teams used it to to do stunt videos for YouTube, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, we're looking at the covers. They they they're kind of quite, you know, don't say much, does it really? If someone holding up a glowing thing, if you wasn't already a fan of Dial H, you'd be like, well, what's that all about then? And I don't think I bother with that, you know. That's my opinion anyway. But obviously, I saw it. And I was like, ooh, ooh, new Dial H. I'll have some of that. <laughs> it wasn't a bad. I need to leave. I need to do. I do need to reread these. Actually, they they weren't bad. They were not bad. 
I believe Robbie Reed shows up at some point trying to get the dial back like he kind of did in the blinking backup story. Some of the backup stories, like, uh, sorry for spoilers, close your ears, you don't want spoilers, but he ends up being a villain in the backup stories and, and the Superboy books. Uh, somehow he accidentally dialed V for villain or something, or, or you know, he got split into two or something like that, and he had to, and they, and Vicky and um, uh, Chris managed to, to get his two sides back together no I'm, I'm, I'm confusing it with the most recent run that i read i might be confused at the most recent run that i read now but i'm sure there was a little something to do with that in in the in the backup one as well oh, anyway right this is um yeah man turning to a woman this is a hark back to the legions uh story where matarita lad gets turned into a woman this guy uses the power dial and uh who says that you know, he just says you makes you into a hero. You could be a, why not be a female hero? <laughs> he could turn you into all sorts of like strange creatures, like the Zoid or the Zorb or whatever it was called. It's like a, a bouncing, boinging kind of thing. Um, yeah, so why not turn you into a you know different gender? <laughs> As you can see, he's like, uh oh, <laughs> that was yeah, interesting. And then uh, here, I'm assuming it's the same character, seeing as he's having a shave. <laughs> Uh, don't forget to leave the seat down, he's saying. She's saying. She's saying. She. They are saying. You must use a, a non specific pronoun, is it? I can't remember. Um, lovers and other dangers. You never saw that on the covers in the 60s and the blinking 80s, that's for sure. Electors. I thought there's a bit of electric going between them, in case you wonder what it was. It was <laughs> it's not saliva, it's a bit of electricity. Right. They're interesting covers, but you know, definitely a different, definitely a change in in style. But like this one, a bit more superheroic, maybe. But he looks like he looks like a villain to me. He's, he's, he's covered in blood. Good guys and bad guys. Yeah, there's a dead copper in the in the blinking bin behind him. In the what do they call them big bins in America? Trash carts, maybe. So not good. All right, Copland. All the cops are in yellow, and look, they're trying to take in one lone superpowered person by the looks of it. Uh, pieces of hate. With the blurb on that cover. Uh, oh, that's not good. This this here this dial user doesn't look like they've uh, they're in the best of fettle. They're not in the finest of fettle in this cover. One would even go to say they look a bit dead. <laughs> Some little girl telling the super villain, or super, I don't know what it is, you need a time out. <laughs> Interesting. Is that somebody else's power dialed up, maybe? And um, this one just says death grip. Someone's been, a little person being held in their hand. Uh... All right, we come to the end now. Number 22 is the last one. Here we go. That's Robbie Reed there holding up the dial. He's Sokka Maji. He's reclaimed the dial. I can't remember if he says Sokka Maji. It wouldn't surprise me if he did, though, at some point. Uh, he has to really, doesn't he? <laughs> Even modern writers would still do that throwback to his, his old catchphrase, I'm sure. Right, and then we've got um, later on... Um, in another decade's time, nearly a decade's time. So that last one finished in 05, actually. So seven years' time, a new one starts up, 2012. This is uh, by the writer China Melville. Myville, I always pronounce it wrong. I'll put, I'll put an extra L into it. May, Myville, China Myville. I think he's a London-based um, writer. I'm sure I remember reading from London. Left-wing um, politics, I've read up a bit about him a bit. There's some very interesting science fiction stuff. I've read only one book, but he looks like he's got some very sort of interesting ideas. But um, yeah, if you haven't read about him, but this is an this was quite an interesting. This is very sort of um, interesting concepts, I'd say. Interesting about where the the dial people were coming from, you know, where the, the and the crazy whacked out um, dial up things. The dial up heroes in this one were just off the charts mad. Off the charts crazy, and the the dial is being chased by people. People want the dial back. I can't remember what the name of the people who are who are after the dial, but um, 
more fun kind of Doom Patrol looking covers, if you know what I mean. It's Brian Boland. He did do, uh, did he do some Doom Patrol ones as well? I can't remember if he did some Doom Patrol in that classic one. I don't think he did, but it was similar kind of... Who was it who did a lot of covers on that one? It might have, No, he did Animal Man. Brian Boland did Animal Man, didn't he? So maybe it's in that kind of... No, but it's like Doom Patrol looking weird characters. Look at the weirdness of that. It's like a, a lion llama. Oh, it's a, it's a minotaur. Not a minotaur, it's a... Right, it's got lion's head and a scorpion's tail. That is a... Oh, I can't remember my Dungeons and Dragons, my my Dragon Warriors. I know what it is. It's in the bloody... Oh, Manticore. Manticore, not a Minotaur. Yeah, it's a Manticore, isn't it? There we go. That guy with some cards around his... Floating around his head. Pretty cool, interesting, like, characters. Right. Strange woman there, holding on to the... Foam with weird stick fingers. Uh, I think that, yeah, Boland again. Disconnected, it says. Right. This lizard person's got a hole in them. I think the lizard person was one of the people who was after. I can't remember what his name was now. He had quite an interesting, funny name, though, if I recall. Right, Into the Abyss. There was lots of um, going into other dimensions in this one as well, like the other dimensions where the, the dial had come from. Uh, kid Torture. Uh, Dr. Dictatrix. <laughs> so this is someone looking at some of the characters that have been created, like photographs of them. This is a bit of a hark back to that uh, cover I showed yesterday, where all the photographs are hanging up on like developing uh, lines in a dark room. And, a, and this is kind of similar. Someone looking at photographs of all these new... Heroes that have turned up, like a bit of an old man's hand there. I think he was another. I think it was a government-related guy who was after them. But there were some really cool and inventive uh, characters. Some craziness going on in that cover there. I like these covers more than the last issue's cover. The last series covers. The last series covers were a bit wishy-washy. You couldn't really tell what was going on or what what to expect about it. This one, just they look more interesting. Can't help, hurt, can't hurt that it's Brian Boland's art, of course. Uh, this guy was quite weird. I can't remember what his name was, but he was like one of the major villains. He's like he was like a sort of kind of like a super speed, but for some reason he's duplicate himself like along a line of his of his of his movement. It was a bit strange. I can't remember that in a good concept. There is a guy with a massive ant head. <laughs> Man, I should looked up what the name of the character names because there's just some there's just some weirdness going on. Some absolute weirdness. Uh, then there's a a man dog aeroplane hybrid. <laughs> that's the, that's the only way I can describe this. It's a man dog aeroplane hybrid. I dare say they've got a good name. Uh, this is just a what the? It's just some hard up a, a normal looking telephone dial on its own. Right, this guy, I can't remember what his name is now. I, I, I was thinking it might be the Defenestrator, but I don't think it is. Uh, it might be, though, because he throws people out of windows. Did he throw people out of windows? I remember there was a guy on a Spawn comic once called the Defenestrator. He was on the Violator run, and his, his thing was he threw people through windows, and he had his own window that he carried around with him. But this guy actually is kind of a window. Uh, he, <laughs> there's his and I love, what I love about him is well, he's got a curtain rod behind the window with the curtain hang off, on off it which, which forms his cape so his cape is formed out of the, the curtain from the window that his head is poking through <laughs> I'm going to have to open it up and there he is, on the, there he is again on the back of that one kind of manic and crazed look he's, he's drawn a, 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 a dial on the wall that he's dialing up on and I think this was like a he was like a, a H-style user from another dimension and he was trying to wise them up on what was happening with the H-style. See if I can find out what his name was because it's just, it's just um, annoying me now. Hmm. He hasn't turned up yet. 
it was quite funny in these ones. There was it was two people, uh, a woman who had used the dial before, and it's like the, the, the two people who are the main dial wielders are not your usual like good looking young there's a, there's a fat guy Mike like, kind of like a, an every man me kind of person he's an overweight middle aged dude and the woman is like a she's I don't know 50 60 something like that she's, she's getting on in years she's of advancing years and these are the two main wielders of the dial and you can see this robot-y thing after them there the dial is mine and that's when <laughs> that's when the guy comes popping through the window. <laughs> I think he teleports via windows as well. I can't remember now. Whoosh, move! He's just coming in through the window. Get out of my way! Who the hell? I oh, I am open window man. <laughs> I am open window man. There you go. <laughs> oh, defenestration punch. That was his move. Defenestration punch. <laughs> Punched him through a window. <laughs> oh dear. This is craziness going on here. Look, there's the guy of ant heads, ant head guy, and uh, there's a cowboy riding on the back of a missile. All kind of crazy. All kind of crazy going on. <laughs> The dial bunch. Anyway, yeah, let's get on with showing you the rest of these comics. I do apologise for the diversion there, the digression. Open window man. <laughs> oh dear. A bit crazy. A bit crazy, man. A bit crazy. Carrying on the same run. They just, I think this one must be in another dimension because all the little people are green, and uh, there's a an elephant man. Wow, look at the crazy guy in that one. He's just sitting there on the dial with all these weird and wonderful characters in the background. The rabbit, a woman with a rings of satin around her head. The smoking chimney man. Crazy. Oh, Brian Bolan's just gone crazy on that one. He's just like, I'm gonna come up with, I'm gonna come up with some crazy looking characters. And he did, and that's the end of that one. That was fifteen issues in that in that run. Uh, pretty pretty out there, right? And then um, I knew that there was a new Dial of H for Hero run recently, and I didn't put, I didn't buy it when it came out. Cause I don't buy modern comics really much, um, and I ended up buying them all in one go for like a fraction of what they would have cost me if I bought the whole lot of them. You know, I, they cost me. I think they cost me about one pound five p each or something like that, rather than probably three pound fifty each so yeah so it's the new dial h for hero run which i thoroughly enjoyed i must say a um, lot more geared to to kids a lot more like uh um i don't know maybe not even pg-13 but you know young yeah not, not like super baby kids but you know like just the general all ages i would say kind of sort of style and story and um a little bit of um a little bit of freakiness on it but um yeah overall very enjoyable only the one dial but i think lots of people were using it and there was uh, and there was people after the dial it seems to be the trope with dial hq now there's always someone after getting the dial back and there's also also i think the 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 story of what the what powered the dial from the last series i think was re reach altered in this series i'm sure it was um yeah robbie reed turns up again he's now an old man but that's also robbie reed he's split himself in two there's also different dials in this one that do different different things as well uh, <laughs> it was good it was fun jolly good read And some quirky ideas. There's one comic where you, you read it from front to back and, and from back to front as well. Two different stories going on at the same time. But running on all alternate pages from one direction to the other direction. So that was a little a little bit interesting. Um, and I loved the way that every time there was a, um, a new person dialed up, they did a little origin story and a little half page or a page of their origin. And they were, you know, they were crazy characters with crazy origins. And that was, I loved that kind of inventiveness. That was just like, yeah, that was just, I lapped that kind of thing up. 
all good fun. Right, so that's all of my dial H's for now. And um, still got to finish off the first series. Still got a few more to get from that. And I've got a couple in as backup. As far as I know, I think it backed up in... Was it in, was it in Superman originally? And then it went out to, to Adventure on its own. Then it went to... No, before that, of course, it had its own run, didn't it? But I think it's had a couple of backups. One in Superboy, New Adventures of Superboy, I think. And I think it was in this, even I think it was in a Superman before that, or an action, something like that. But uh, yeah, I think I hope I've got them all now. Uh, but once I finish off the first run, I'll have them all. Hopefully, soon, one day, they'll all be mine. But then all comics will be mine one day <laughs> when I win the lottery <laughs> or or become a super villain. Oh yeah, I was reading a Dial uh, H today in one of the old adventures. I posted it up on my Facebook and uh, on Instagram. Uh, a created character called the Firecracker. And uh, he's stealing comics. He's going to a comic shop saying, I'm stealing all these comics. <laughs> I'm going to steal all these most expensive comics from this comic shop. But he's like, he's like holding one like, he's, he's, rep he's like crunching it up, like, you know, holding it all folded. It's like, no, you're just destroying the grades. You're, you're, you're robbing yourself by, you know, damaging the comics while you're stealing them. <laughs> he needs me as a henchman to tell him which ones to go for and uh, how to properly treat them. <laughs> of course, then he'd have to sell them on as well. Well, which you know, uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so let's shout out a less bigly channel. Uh, I've got a mate, um, used to be in a band in London, uh, called Carnal Rights. He moved to America a long time ago now, could be uh, maybe 10 years, I don't know how long it's been, but a long time ago, he moved to America, and he's all into nerdy, geeky stuff. He's always like all sorts of fun movie related thing he does lots of cosplaying as well i'm sure he must read comics although he doesn't make any comic content on his channel but he's got i'm not sure he's been doing a channel for it's him and his wife his wife is like the the from what i've seen so far she's the one who is the host of the videos uh, i'm sure they must um come up with the the writing and whatever themselves you know between them um the channel is called nerd safari it's very much uh fixed on film stuff like I've only managed, I've only, I only just found out about the channel recently. I was their hundred and one subscriber, I think, one hundred and first subscriber, not hundred and one. Hundred and one is not even a blinking number. Hundred and first subscriber, and um, you know, let's get them some more subscribers. I don't think any of you would be subscribed to them yet because they don't do comic stuff. But if you like geeky movies, they did the thing about the um, Buffy the Vampire Slayer was the last one I watched, and I know that they do lots of geeky opening events. They host. Um, like film nights at a local cinema to them, I think, where they like show the geeky old films of the past kind of thing and do dress up and, and you know, announce the movies. I suppose they must do some kind of speech about it or something like that. But, yeah, go and check out their um, Nerd Safari channel. The link's in down below. It's in the corner as well. If you want to check out his band, my mate um, oh, Simon. Yeah, I've forgotten his name now. Simon, yeah. He's Simon. I've got a terrible memory. <laughs> when I say he's a mate, he's an acquaintance. He was an acquaintance. I only ever saw him at their gigs. But uh, I always used to... They, they played songs for me. Like, cause one time I went to a gig and I was practically the only one there. So I shouted out requests. I've actually got a song um, called Why So Serious. Obviously, uh, based on the Joker, which is a pretty cool, cool song. Why so serious? Why so serious? Yeah. <laughs> anyway... Uh, yeah, if you want to find, if you want to listen to them, I've got uh, live footage of them on my channel. Just go to my channel, search out Carnal Rights, and uh, it'll take you to their videos, <laughs> some of their videos. But also make sure you sub up Nerd Safari's channel. And uh, until next time, may all your news be good news. Bye, Grey Maniacs. Go sub up Nerd Safari, or I'll beat you with a salami. Go sub up the Safari of Nerds, or heed my words, I'll feed your corpses to the birds. Bleh.